Welcome to Calc section 2.2 and what we're doing is we're going to start learning some rules for the derivative and so we don't have to go through the definition of derivative anymore. Uh, just to start off let's look at some graphs. If I take a cubic and I try to do the derivative of the cubic I can draw this thing and we did this in class already so if I draw this I get this graph and it will graph the derivative. And so right now, the slope of my tangent here is positive. So I have positive values here. Once I get to here, my slope of my tangent will be 0. So I should be plotting a 0. And sure enough, I did. And so there's my 0. This dotted line is above the x-axis because my derivative, I'm just recording all these values. The slopes of these tangents are positive values. Now my slope is going to be negative and so I'm going to drop down below here and I will get another zero when I get over here. And so there's another, um, I'm still negative slope. In fact, negative five. If you calculated this slope of this line, it'd be negative five. And then I go to here, my slope would be zero. There's my zero. So all in this section I was decreasing, so all my slopes were negative. And then if I continue on, I get that shape. So I started off with a cubic in the red here, and then I get a derivative, which is the, um, the uh, looks like a quadratic. And if I take the derivative of the quadratic, I'm going to be decreasing, so I'm going to be negative here. And so I'm negative, and then I'm going to be 0. And then now I'm increasing, so I'm going to be positive. Above the x-axis means that I'm positive. And so if you look at this, now I took the derivative of this, this black one here, and I got this purple one. So I went from a cubic, first derivative would be a quadratic, next derivative would be a linear, and what do you think the derivative of this thing will be? It will be a constant function. And finally, if I take a derivative of that constant function, I'm going to get this one here, which is 0. So the derivative of a constant would be 0. And so that's kind of the order. We're just going descending on the exponents when we do this. So if I go back to the notes, some of the rules that we're going to go through, we're going to do day one here first. First one is the const constant rule. If we take the derivative of a constant, I'm going to end up with 0. And that is if f if c is a real number then the derivative of c this dx in front means i'm taking the derivative of this c and that's going to be equal to zero so if i do some examples here i have the first one y is equal to four that's a constant and so what i'm going to do with that is i'm going to write y prime now it's the derivative don't just write equals that's going to be zero now this number two, well, all these are constants, so f prime of x, these are just different ways I can write the derivative. And so f prime of x is equal to negative three. Derivative of zero, I can also write dy dx. That's a constant, I'm gonna get zero again. And this, if you look at all that, I don't see any variables, that is a constant. So what we can write for this one is s prime of t, we see this sometimes as a position function, this would be zero as well. Now, if we look at uh, polynomials, we have different rules for polynomials in each piece of the polynomial. If I take this, the power rule, I have a base that's a variable and then an exponent that's a constant. We said that if we took the derivative of a cubic, we got a quadratic. So it's always going to go down. But when I do that, I'm going to get an additional coefficient here. So when you take the derivative of x to the n, you bring the n out front and then you raise it to the one less power. So let me just show you how this rule works. So if I go dy dx is equal to one less, uh, bring the power out in front, and then I'm going to write down the x, and then I'm going to raise that to one less power. And we saw some of these patterns when we were doing the derivatives by a definition. Uh, this one I can go y prime. Why don't you try these and then come back and look at these as well. So it's 5x to the fourth. So pause right now. Oh, well, I got to show you some of these. These you got to rewrite. This would be x to the one fourth. That's how you do the fourth root. So first of all, you rewrite. And so if I take, I haven't done f prime yet. 
f prime is equal to bring the one fourth out in front and don't use slanted fractions try to use straight across fractions and then subtract one one fourth minus one well that's going to give me negative three fourths if you remember your negative exponents that i say is uncomfortable negative exponents are uncomfortable so it needs to be moved to the denominator so this would be one over four the base here is x that gets moved to the three-fourths, ah, uh, now it's comfortable. So that would be your final answer for the derivative. Try this one, rewrite. This would be x to the negative three. So both of these you have to rewrite first. And this will carry throughout the year. And so then if I take y prime, that is going to be put the negative three out in front and raise it to the one less. One less would be negative four. So I end up simplifying this, and this would be x to the x to the fourth in the denominator. The negative can go with the three. Please do not leave a negative exponent in your answer. You can leave a, a rational uh, fraction. I should say fractions for the exponents. You can leave that as long as it's positive, but do not leave an answer with a negative exponent. Make sure you rewrite negative exponents. for your final answer. Okay, moving on. Now we take these rules and we put them together. So if you have separate terms, well, let's let's do this one first. Constant multiple rule. If I take the derivative where I have a constant multiplied by a function, what I say is that this constant goes along for the ride. So if I look at this, this x squared, we know how to take the derivative of that now. You just bring the two out in front. Well, the three is already there. That shouldn't be a problem. So we'll go y prime is equal to three stays there. And then I'm going to put in the two x raised to the first. These are out in front together. So I can rewrite this overall as six x. This one rewrite. And so if I take this one and I do the derivative, Make sure I write down that I'm doing the derivative. Y prime is equal to negative. Uh, I already have the two out front there. I think you can brain that. Negative two times two is negative four. X to the negative three. Remember, don't leave a negative exponent in your answer. So the negative four stays up top. And then, ah, nice. The negative exponent feels comfortable now that it's positive. And then this last one, this is just x to the first. Remember, if we take the derivative, well, what is this? This is a line with a slope of 3 halves. The derivative is the slope, so I just get the constant times that, so it's just the 3 halves. Now, if I do these, these are with respect to this Theorem 2.5, sum and difference rules. You just do it one piece at a time. So if I look at this, y prime is equal to 2x plus 3. And then what's the derivative of the constant? Well, it's 0. I don't need to write 0. Maybe you want to do that for effect right now. But then this would be y prime is equal to 2x plus 3. That's the derivative. Wow, these shortcuts are sure nice compared to what we were just doing. So I go y prime is equal to, coefficient here is negative 1 half. I have to bring the 3 with it. So this is going to be negative 1 half. I'll do this one in two steps. So I raise that to the one less power and bring the 3 out in front. Minus, I have the 3, and I'm going to multiply by the 2 and the x. So I brought the 2 out in front. The 3 is already there, so I put them together. And then if I have 4x, that's just 4. And then the last one's the 0. I'm not going to write that this time. And I can simplify this one out. Voila, there's your derivative. And if I look at uh, continuing on, now this is a small application of it. It says find the slope of the tangent to this curve at the point 1, 3. If you remember from before, we need to find the derivative. 
And if we plug in this x, that would tell me the slope of the tangent at that point. But more so, it also says write the equation of this tangent line. So make sure you answer the question. So I'm going to find y prime is equal to 3x squared plus 3. The derivative of 1, 0. So it drops out. And I'm going to evaluate this. And I can do this notation. It's not that common, but it works. I'm finding the derivative at this point. So this would be 3 plus 3, which is 6. This is the slope. So to write the equation of a line, I need the slope and I need a point. So I have the slope and I have a point. I like to use the point slope form. This one I'll use quite a bit in this class because it's easy to put in your calculator and such too. So y minus the y1, 3 is equal to the slope and then the x minus the 1. Yeah, you could leave it like that, but right now I expect you to simplify this. So it's y is equal to 6x minus 6. I bring the 3 over. So y is equal to 6x minus 3. This is the end of the first part of the section. There's two lines on the homework. You do the first line of the homework, and that should take care of you. So just remember that taking the derivative derivatives of polynomials, you can take them, well, this, these rules stand for a lot of things, but if I have a power, you take the power, put it out in front, and raise it to the one less. Okay, so this is the end, put it out in front, and then raise it to the one less power. And then you can do it one piece at a time as well, if you wish. And there we have it. Thank you. And I'll leave you with some Johnny Cash.